Hi guys, Nick Lamond here. I'm here to introduce the brand new Sculpel Carbon 2 from Cannondale. And it's an all new bike, brand new geometry, brand new setup, uh, and quite a lot of effort time, and it's pretty exciting to bring this thing to you. So Cannondale's three-year-old Sculpel SI is being phased out, and in comes the 2021 Sculpel Carbon 2, is the one that we've got our hands on but the full range Sculpel 1, Sculpel 2, Sculpel 3, and then down the line, uh, some slightly more trail-oriented bikes are coming your way. I've been really lucky to own and race a couple of Sculpels through the years. The bikes have changed dramatically over a decade, and in 2010, I was riding a 26-inch single pivot, uh, flexi-stayed, uh, very twitchy bike. The bike has progressed massively since then. There's one thing that I can say is they've always been fast. Uh, although the early versions were quite hard and a little twitchy. That's changed over the years, and as I mentioned earlier, the latest version is something that fans are going to be quite interested to see how it can be improved. The cross-country bikes have come a long way in a decade. Overall, they're more comfortable and infinitely more capable than the early versions. But the question remains, how do you squeeze both comfort and ability into a flagship race bike that's going to be satisfying your World Cup racer, and also still exciting for the legion of rank and file trail riders who are gonna be buying the product. So this generation of Cannondale's iconic Sculpel has some pretty unique South African flavor. It's well known that Manny Fumic and Enrique Avancini and the Cannondale factory team visit South Africa often and use Stellenbosch area as, its, as a base for its annual pre-season training camp. So that was the first time the bike was made available to the team, it was actually earlier this year when the boys all came out and tore up the trails around Stellenbosch. Tankwa Trek in February was actually the very first time this bike was raced in front of crowds. So we got our hands on the Cannondale Sculpel Carbon 2 for a first look and a quick thrash. So the biggest differences are the all new four bar linkage system, which replaces Cannondale's previous single pivot setup. It's not new, but it's a big departure for Cannondale and particularly on the Sculpel rig. The PR says Cannondale's performance is down to the new four bar flex pivot suspension system with its patented durable carbon fiber flex zones, which apparently act like a horse link pivot without the weight or flex of bolts and bearings. So let's look at the geometry. Remember we had a medium on test, which is about the right size for me. I can fit into a medium or a large right on the cusp. Um, so we'll break it down for you for a medium, but all the other details will be available online pretty soon. For me, the Sculpel's most noticeable feature is the head angle, which is one and a half degrees slacker than it was before. And it's now sitting at 68 degrees. That's a game changer. And it's the first thing that you'll notice when you throw a leg over the bike. It makes for some pretty confident descending. The chainstay length remains the same at 436 mils. BB height is fractionally lower at 331 mils, and it adds to the bike stability and pumps up the confidence levels. Obviously, the wheelbase is slightly longer to accommodate a slacker head angle, and the reach is also longer at 435 mils on the medium. A steeper seat tube is across the range, and it's now a degree steeper at 74.5 degrees. So the Sculpel features the eighth generation Lefty Ocho fork, which has been in play since 2018, so there's nothing really new here, but it's worth mentioning that it's as stiff, light, and responsive as ever, and has the nifty stop-lock quick-release brake mount system, uh, and a cable-actuated lockout, which is paired to both the lefty fork and obviously the Fox Evol shock. So the bike is specced with Shimano's 12-speed XT group set throughout, which is about the most reliable group set you can spec a bike with these days. Brakes are responsive, shifting is accurate. The hologram wheels and cranks are Cannondale's own and do the job admirably. The wheels are stiff and light and have survived a couple of big hits already. Throughout, it's a very solid and reliable build. DT Swiss's HG hubs, Schwalbe tires, the racing Ray up front and the racing Rolf on the back, 2.25 inch tires. The build kit is Cannondale's two alloy bars, stem and seat post. Build also comes with ESI grips and a Prologo saddle. A nifty addition is Cannondale stash kit, which comes integrated in the frame and has a fabric 8-in-1 multi-tool and Dyna plug, 
which is handy for those trail side fixes when you're losing tire pressure and want to get back out. It has a CO2 cartridge holder, and it all means a lot less gear bouncing around in your jersey pockets when you're out on the trail. All of this comes in at a weight of 10.7 kgs without pedals. We've only had two rides on the bike so far, so there's plenty more riding to be done to understand how the bike performs in different terrain and under different circumstances. My takeouts for the bike so far are it's nimble, it's playful, yet extremely sure-footed on descents and pushing into fast corners and tight burns. The slacker head angle is the most noticeable feature when you first saddle up, but there's still a thoroughbred XC racehorse rippling under the skin here. Thanks for tuning in for our first look of the all-new Candale Scalpel Carbon 2. If you've enjoyed this, please give it a like and a share. And if you'd like to keep up to date with all future episodes, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on those notifications. Till next time, see you later. <laughs>